Welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah and this is Jar of Fireflies. Here I make videos all about my life as an Orthodox Jewish homeschooling mother of four. And yes, today I have news to share. Yes, folks, we have added Baby Firefly to our family. Baby Firefly is here. <sighs> today I will be sharing the birth story with you. But before we do that, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Kasi Magnetic Tiles. I gave a set of these to each of my kids shortly before my induction, and they have been playing with them every day. Besides exercising their creativity and all the fun that comes with building with the magnetic tiles, they are also a fantastic teaching tool. One way that we have been using them is for math. I take a dry erase marker and I write the numeral, written word, and a set of dots for the numbers that my four-year-old is working on. He matches them up and it helps him reinforce the number and word recognition that he's working on in our school. There are so many other ways that we plan to integrate these magnetic tiles into our schooling. Kasi is launching a Let's Learn booklet filled with ideas. It's a free resource to download. Check out the link in the pinned comment or in the description box below to download your copy today. More creative learning ideas will be updated there and there is a 20% off coupon. Make sure you check out Kasi on Instagram and on Facebook to see their full range of products and keep getting more ideas. I will also link to their website down in the description box below, so be sure to check them out and all the products they offer, especially these super awesome magnetic tiles. And now on to the birth story. Okay, so where we left off in my last video is we were driving to the hospital for my induction. Whew, okay, so. I had called the hospital earlier in the day at about three o'clock to verify per their request that my room was ready for me and that I could come in for my induction on schedule and we didn't have to push it off or anything like that. So we arrived there about 4.30 and they told us the room was not ready. <laughs> So we, we finished the rest of like check-in stuff. I had done like a pre-registration already, but we just finished the last minute check-in stuff down in like the lobby area of the hospital. And then we went over to the maternity ward, like the labor and delivery and postpartum and all that stuff. So we hung out there in the waiting room by the labor and delivery there for a little bit, which was fine. I had brought a book with me. My husband was there, we were hanging out. It didn't take too long though until our room was ready. So we went down to the room. The labor and delivery rooms at this hospital are really nice. I'm really happy with them. And pretty much as soon as I walked in, they're like, and we're gonna get started. And I was like, okay then. <laughs> so they did a check and I was two centimeters, which was super awesome. So we were able to go ahead and get started on the induction right away. We did something called a Foley bulb or a Foley catheter. Uh, there might be like one other name for it, but it's a Foley induction. It's basically where they insert sort of like little balloons by your cervix and that helps your cervix to open up and can also induce contractions because it's aggravating your cervix. So it really wasn't as bad as I thought. I was really nervous about that whole idea. <laughs> of the Foley induction. I had, that was not how my first induction was. So this was something totally new and different to me, but um, it really wasn't that bad getting it in and having it there. So that was fine. However, it did start working soon enough and things did start to get crazy again. There was still like a lot of paperwork for me to sign, consent forms and things like that. So the room is definitely not quiet until about eight o'clock. Like I said, there were like forms to sign. Um, they had lots of questions for me. They were taking medical history again. They were uh, taking, uh, drawing blood, like all kinds of stuff that they have to do when you get into the hospital. So they were doing all of that. And, and I was just kind of like sitting there <laughs> with the Foley thing in and trying to move around a little bit because I still could. They had no problem with me eating while the Foley was in. And so, yeah, I just kind of kept doing my thing and just kind of hanging out. I was in contact with my doula, but I didn't need her to come at that point. So, and like I said, I did have a, a few contractions while that Foley was in, but nothing like too crazy and definitely nothing like regular or anything like that. Okay, so at about 8.30, the Foley came out, which was really surprisingly quick uh, in general. Normally it's in for, I don't know, I think about four hours, 
but I mean, when is there a rhyme or reason to labor and delivery? <laughs> so, okay, let's jump up to about 10.30 p.m. Yes, I did take notes. <laughs> so yeah, at about 10.30 p.m. I was having regular contractions on my own. So that was super fantastic and the Foley was out. So my body at this point was just doing its thing. I was hooked up to monitors by this point, but I was also still able to freely move about the room and get out of bed and things like that. They had brought in a birthing ball for me to sit on. And so that was nice. Things were still going really well. Like I was definitely having the contractions, but like everything was working really well. We talked about maybe doing Pitocin at this point, but we decided to put it off a little bit because my body was doing really well on its own. And I was fine kind of putting that stuff off. I did go ahead and call my doula though at this point. I knew she was gonna take about an hour to get to me and I could feel that things were definitely starting to get moving and we probably would be starting pit soon enough. So I wanted to make sure that she was gonna be here for me when I really needed her. So I went ahead and called her and she started to be on her way. All right, so at about 1.30 a.m. I was trying to get some sleep through some of these contractions. Um, they were probably maybe five minutes apart by this point. So I was getting some sleep, it was broken up, but I was getting some rest and sleep. We also started Pitocin at this point, so I definitely wanted to make sure I got some sleep because I knew that if I went to sleep, it was gonna be now or never. So the contractions had definitely picked up and were coming at a really good interval, but it really still wasn't that bad. So I was still pushing off the epidural. I have no problem getting an epidural. I've gotten it with all of my other kids. My labors have been so long historically that you gotta sleep in there at some point. But with this one, you know, I didn't know how long it was gonna be, but I also still wanted to put it off as long as I could. Through the contractions, I was really working on just relaxing my entire body and having this, you know, just like kind of a mindset of calm and breathing through it and that the contractions were causing my body to open so that I could meet my baby and, and that everything was working well and really just really trying to stay calm and relaxed because if I started to tense up even like a finger, then like the contractions hurt so much more and it was really hard to relax after I had tensed up at all during a contraction. So just really focusing on relaxing through the contractions and breathing through them. And I felt like I was doing a really good job. I was really proud of myself. Okay, jumping ahead to about 4 a.m. Now the contractions were really strong. So I was still doing okay through the contractions, but it was getting really hard. And I knew that we were probably like 45 minutes to an hour out of getting an epidural once I said that I wanted one. So at this point I decided, let's go ahead and prepare for the epidural. And that's what we decided to do. So in, before I can get the epidural, I have to have like a certain amount of fluids through the IV. So they went ahead and started those fluids. And that was gonna take about 30 to 45 minutes for me to get all of that. And at that point then, uh, towards the end of that, then they were able to go ahead and call the anesthesiologist because by the time we were getting through those fluids, I was like, no, no, let's make sure she's coming. There was no question that I wanted the epidural at that point. The contractions were just a couple of minutes apart and they were really strong. And so it was like, there wasn't much of a break going on and, but I still had a ways to go and yeah, I wanted that epidural. <laughs> While we were doing those IV fluids and I was waiting for the anesthesiologist and working through those contractions, I did go ahead and make sure that I was standing up that whole time because I knew after I got the epidural, I would have to stay in bed. So I, I totally cannot walk with an epidural. Maybe some people can, I don't know, I certainly can't. Standing up for me, it's also a good position to help baby move down. So just kind of for all the reasons I wanted to stand up through those contractions there for that hour or so. My doula provided amazing comfort measures for me, especially during this hour. I was so happy that I hired her. She was really amazing. It was a really tough hour to get through waiting for the anesthesiologist because things had picked up so quickly in there. And, and you know, I was on a pretty decent dose of Pitocin at this point as well. So uh, by the time the anesthesiologist did come in, like I didn't even see her when she came in the room. I was so focused still on the contractions and um, it wasn't until like she was done with everything that I was like, oh, hi, <laughs> thanks for coming. <laughs> so the, an the anesthesiologist came in at about 5 a.m. and we kept having to pause everything because the contractions were so close together and we wanted her working in between contractions, not like during contractions. And but once the epidural was in, the contractions started to get easier and easier. And after about three or four contractions, I could barely feel them anymore. And that was so nice. <laughs> So by 6 a.m. I was feeling very happy and relaxed, just laying in bed with my epidural. And we did go ahead and do another check. And at that point I was, I was about seven centimeters. 
so that was really awesome i was really happy to make it to seven centimeters and i mean you know we were making really amazing progress this is definitely the fastest labor at this point that i've ever had so like all of these things are really really good and i was feeling good i was happy first thing in the morning before my doctor was off for his stuff that he had to do for the rest of his patients during the day he came in to check on me um i was still at seven centimeters and just kind of my contractions were doing really well. We just kept bumping up the Pitocin and it just everything was just doing its thing. Everything was working, everything was fine. And I was just kind of hanging out waiting because that's what you do once you get the epidural pretty much. However, we did bring out the peanut ball, which is like another um, one of those kind of birthing ball things that are really useful for labor. And I was doing different positions with that uh, to help bring the baby down, uh, which would also help open up my cervix more. So, so at around 10 a.m., I felt like things were done, just like a feeling. And so I went ahead and had the nurse check me and she said that I was fully dilated. So at this point, the nurse called my doctor and uh, just confirmed what he wanted us to do and that was to go ahead and start pushing the baby still wasn't as far down as was would be like ideal but my doctor did tell us to go ahead and start the pushing and to call him when he needed to come so we started pushing and it just through like maybe two or three contractions uh, I was doing fantastic and the baby was really coming down so she went ahead and called my doctor back my nurse went ahead and called my doctor back and was like you should go ahead and come now so he was like okay I'm on my way so I knew it would take him about 10 minutes to get there and you know, we all knew it would take him about 10 minutes to get there from where his office was and almost as soon as we got off the phone with him I started throwing up and it, the contractions like completely stopped and we're sitting there just staring at the monitor and we're like okay nothing is happening now <laughs> we called him for no reason um not really because then I don't know like when it was almost when the 10 minutes was like almost up so finally this other contraction came and I went ahead and pushed and they were, the nurse was like okay let's stop here and wait for the doctor and I was like okay now, at this point, I realized that my baby was crowning. I was like, wait, that is my baby's head. It's time to have a baby. <laughs> but there was no doctor in the room. There was just like the nurse and the doula. So the nurse was like, you need to stop now and just breathe through your contractions. And I was like, no, no, it's time for the baby to be born. You're going to deliver my baby. And she was like, no, I've never delivered a baby before. I can't deliver a baby. And I was like, well, you're going to need to deliver a baby because it's time. And she was like, no, 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 I can't do that. So I turned to my doula. I was like, well, how about you? Will you deliver my baby? I was like, who's going to deliver my baby? Because my baby's coming right now. So I was going through the contractions, like trying not to push, which was fine. Um, my nurse stepped away for a second and then the baby just started like coming out. Like I wasn't pushing or anything, but my baby was just coming out on their own. Like nothing was going to stop this kid from being born. <laughs> I hear the nurses like yelling, they're like, we need a doctor in here. Any doctor. Where's the on-call doctor? Any doctor in the room? <laughs> So finally an on-call doctor came in and they were like trying to move me to some other position. I think they were worried because I have big babies about shoulder dystocia, which I think is where like you have like a dislocated or a broken shoulder or something when the babies are born. That's never been an issue for me in the past. So I wasn't anticipating it being an issue now, but whatever, they wanted me in some certain position. So they were trying to like move me and I'm like, oh, my baby's kind of falling out right now. How about we just deliver, you know? <laughs> I'm sure they all love me. Um, but then my doctor came in. So then there were two doctors in the room. <laughs> I don't know who actually delivered my baby, honestly, but, um, somebody handed me my baby because like one push later, he was out. Yes, folks. It's a boy. I know most of you thought it was a girl, at least those that were leaving guesses, but I did in fact have a boy. <laughs> So he was put right into my arms right away. We were doing skin to skin. He was just so calm on me. Like he definitely knew me. He knew my voice. Uh, Cause he was, you know, as soon as he would start to get upset, I would just say, you know, oh, it's okay. It's okay. I don't think y'all know me. Everything's okay. And I'd say, you're okay. It's okay. And he would just like, just be totally calm. And it was like, we were in our own little universe. He was just staring at me and I was staring at him. And it was just, oh, it was absolutely the best. It was so nice. So they did check him out, make sure that he was okay. Um, and he was totally fine. There were no issues. Nobody was worried about anything. We were able to keep skin to skin there for quite a while. Um, I want to say maybe like an hour. And, and then, but I'm not totally sure. Like the timing in there starts to get wonky for me because I was certainly not staring at a clock. I just remember a nurse saying that they're happy to let him stay with me there for the first hour. So, but after that, they would need to take him and weigh him. So baby's weight. 
a mere nine pounds and four ounces. I know my smallest baby to date. <laughs> So a few of you did get that guess right, and many of you got that guess very close. So that was super fun to see all of your guesses the other day. Thanks for playing along with that. So we did stay there in the delivery room for a couple of hours before moving over to the postpartum area of the hospital. So the whole labor lasted less than 24 hours. I still honestly haven't added up the hours, and I don't know when you'd actually start the labor, if you start it with when I had the Foley in or when I started having contractions or whatever, but, um, I don't know. The whole labor was probably 12, 13, 14, probably about 15 hours of like once contractions really got going and stuff. So yeah, my shortest labor by far. I guess that I would have probably like a 12 to 15 hour labor. So that actually did uh, align with kind of what I thought. I just made that guess for myself based on how my labors get shorter and shorter every time. So <laughs> it was nice to know that I got something right in there. <laughs> So once we did get to the postpartum floor, I let them know I was ready to go home as soon as possible. They they keep you for 24 hours here, uh, pretty much no matter what. Um, there's a lot of tests and stuff they have to do for the baby at 24 hours. Uh, but because they knew that I wanted to go home, they were gonna start all that stuff right at 24 hours, which was nice so that we could get home as quickly as possible. I can't sleep in a hospital, it's so hard. You know, the bed's not comfortable, It's everything's uncomfortable. <laughs> And then the people are coming in your room at all hours of the day and night. And, and there's, there's no opportunities for really for rest or relaxation at a hospital. So I was very eager to get home where I could actually get some rest and relaxation. <laughs> He's been sitting in my lap this whole time, by the way. <laughs> He's just staring up at me. He's so super cute. I am madly in love with him, by the way. He is so awesome. He's super duper cute. Uh, that's what I say. Yeah, he was born at 42 weeks. Exactly. We started the induction the night before I was 42 weeks and he was born on 42 weeks. Exactly. Nine pounds, four ounces. Happy, healthy, beautiful baby boy. And we are all so thrilled. I'm thrilled to be home. I'm thrilled to have him here in my arms and not in my belly anymore. <laughs> and I, I am happy overall with how the birth went. I felt like I did a really good job with how, oh, bless you, leave me out. I felt like I did a good job advocating for myself during the, the birthing process. I felt that I did a really good job um, with you know my choice of doula. Her care was amazing. My nurses were amazing. My husband was amazing. Uh, just everything was, it was a really good experience overall. And I was really happy about that. The only part that I didn't like was being told to stop pushing to wait for a doctor. <laughs> um, I understand it's out of the scope of practice for a nurse to deliver a baby, but I don't know. I kind of like, I guess if I could go back and think more clearly, which who's thinking clearly during childbirth, uh, I would have just probably pushed my baby out on my own, <laughs> delivered my own baby. <laughs> that would have been a cool experience, but it all worked out well and that is what matters. So there are a few pictures there at the beginning, but here's a cute little, whoops, I knocked the camera over. But here's a cute little back of his head. He has hair, he has all this dark hair, which was so funny. Uh, yeah, none of my kids have always been very bald, so. He's very cute. He's very soft. Yeah? He's awake right now. So, when you have hiccups. He is so cute. Okay, <laughs> well that is all that I had planned for this video today to just talk about the birth story and share that with you guys. Oh, I hope I wasn't talking too fast. I get a little excited talking about birth. I love all things birth. So anyways, thank you all for being here. I super appreciate it. I'm gonna go take care of this little dude and siblings and all of that jazz. Um, not that I'm doing much. I will do a video talking about like how postpartum has been. So stay tuned for that as well. But for now, this is this video. So be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed. I would really appreciate that. Make sure that you are subscribed if you have not yet subscribed. I would absolutely love to see you here again. And, and with that, we're gonna go ahead and call this video a close. So thank you all so much for being here as always. Thank you for all of your love and support through all of this waiting and everything and pregnancy. It was rough pregnancy for sure for me. But y'all were so amazing. And it was really, and it was so very helpful to have your support. So thank you all so very much. <sighs> I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. And I will see you in my next upload.